into the NFP. All I could say is this was the NFP, and we failed to take out these highs. It was very muted, actually crummy response in the dollar compared to what happened here. Could we rally up here one more time? Uh, that is possible. You now have a line in the sand under today's lows at 98. The line in the sand for a uh, positive euro would be the 108 level, which was a low that we had on the NFP. So not much damage done to the euro on a strong employment number, which gives me a lower bias in the dollar. Uh, taking out today's lows would take uh, euro back up towards 110. We start closing over 110, 110, My targets of 112, 113 are becoming more and more viable. You can't rule anything out in this highly volatile environment. Last week was the worst week in history, opening week in stock indexes here in the U.S. and the stock market in the U.S. Uh, very important that crude find some type of low. I believe that uh, we're within 24 hours. It may have been today. We have divergence on the crude oil market in our day today. Uh, there could be a turnaround Tuesday, but my bias is that this is going to turn into some type of flag. So if you drew a line off this, your simple measure move would be, let's take it down to 97 and a half, 300 under here would take us down to 95, 95 and a half. So my bias is to sell dollar strength, which means buy weakness in the euro. Even the pound looks like it may be turning the corner. There are some divergences there. Euro, uh, the U.S. dollar yen got to that major support level at the 116 range. It better rally here or we're going to have a major financial accident. I think there'll at least be one rally from 116 in the yen. Uh, possibly back towards the 120 level, extreme case 121. Uh, but then I am expecting lower levels, and as I've been talking for quite some time, that 116 flash crash low in U.S. dollar yen to be taken out. Let's move over to the crude oil because Canada is pushing the sell zone that I talked about last week around the 142 level. I also talked about the Aussie being a buy under 70, around 69 and a half. And for a while, you had well over 150 pips. Aussie's trying to pull back a bit now. We'll see if that 69.20 level works and holds from there. We get a higher low. But if you took the 69.50 level buy, you had some decent profits, at least interday today. Let's just take a quick look at the crude oil market here. <clears throat> Here's a March crude contract. As you can see, we're making new loads here. RSI really not diverging, washing out all kinds of things. So um, it still was my view that we'd have this break and that we'd have some type of reflex rally initially back to 38 and maybe 42. So it's still my view that uh, uh, this was a low. I was talking about that we'd have one more low, uh, told us not to short USD CAD. Looking for some type of turnaround Tuesday tomorrow to generate that pullback signal in USD CAD. Give me a why if you're with me. S&Ps, this was the worst week. I, I talked about it earlier. Worst opening week in the S&Ps in the history of modern stock trading. This was last week in the S&P, so you guys know I've been looking for a sell-off. I think this 1900 area could hold for at least maybe a rally to 1980, 2000, maybe the dollar uh, reacts on that. If that happens, then perhaps we get that rally in the Dixie back towards that uh, high that we had last week. Uh, the jury's out on that. Quick look at the gold market. That gold. So some money flows into gold with the stock market sell off. Gold not acting that great from this 1110 area. Maybe we're going to pull back. Back under 1080, we have the bear market going again in the gold. So 1080 is your line in the sand. Gold bulls, we start taking that out. We're on our ways to on our way to new lows.
to me a wide view with me, and that would be negative the Aussie. But still, since the Aussie lagged behind the gold, the gold had been bouncing with the Aussie pulling back, and it is a higher low like I forecasted in Aussie. Um, I still think there's a potential for the Aussie to give us at least an ABC recovery. Give me a Y if you're with me. And then we take a look at treasuries, which are the beneficiary of uh, US dollar yen being weak, meaning the yen being strong under your TLTs. And despite the crash in the market, the bonds really didn't have any kind of extreme super move to the upside. In fact, we're still underneath the highs from a few weeks ago. So this is telling me there is a chance for the bonds to come back off and the end of rally kind of favors maybe the dollar getting stronger for a little bit. So I don't have the same conviction level I had in a lot of different markets. Uh, last week, I uh, talked about covering Euro shorts when we were down there at that 107.20 level, market rallied to 109 in a hurry, and now we're starting to move sideways there. So when I don't have a high level of conviction, I trade less. So after last week, the right move was you shouldn't have been caught short the dollar based upon when I told you to cover everything last week on the short side of Euro for over 300 pips. And you may not have bought it down there last Wednesday, I think the market's going to offer several opportunities as the market recovers from the shock that it had last week. We had that line in the sand in the Dixie at 98, and that's going to be uh, in the euro up there around that uh, 110 level. So these are the outside markets. Any questions on that? I'm very, a very lonely crude bull looking for a bounce here and very lonely. Canada Bear looking for some type of correction in the Canadian. They're both tied in together. Best guess is it happens uh, tomorrow. Some type of reversal happens tomorrow in both of them. Any questions on the outside markets before we move to our individual instruments? Very well, here we go. We we'll start off with Euro USD. So here we were uh, in the Euro last Wednesday at the webinar. I was thinking we could have a bullish uh, NFP and that we might take out these 107 lows, but actually the 61.8 level held. We were short from up here, uh, plus 110, said to cover. Uh, then the market rallied into the NFP, and then here was the NFP right here. So all it was was a corrective move off this initial bounce. And to me, the path of least resistance is still to the upside. The line in the sand is the NFP low. We take out one weight, and then we're going to start talking about 106.70 again. But to me right now, it looks like the euro is going to hold and head higher, at least for a third drive formation up here. We have drive one. We have drive two and drive three to the upside. We could be there in a hurry. It's back at this 110 level, 196. So you start to look at this 110 level on the daily right here. This is looking like a flag. And if you have equality from here and these lows hold at 107, we're talking about 112. And possibly a retest of this breakdown trend line on the daily at 112.67. So uh, I'd be long with stops under 108. You have to get out under 108 because that's going to set up the retests I thought that would happen next week down there at the 640 level. Right now, the path of least resistance looks to be on the upside. Jobs numbers were much stronger than anticipated, came in almost at 300,000. And all we could do is pull back. This was the NFP reaction. Got a, a nice candle. It wasn't completely a reversal, but that was the high for the move. So looking for a potential third drive up here for it to do some work against the 110 level. And then once we start taking out these highs right here. 110. From 107 is going to give you up towards 113. So uh, bearish a dollar confirmation is back under the low. 
of the dollar index low that we held today and back over the high of one uh, 109.90 in euro USD looks constructive to me unless we take out Friday's low. Any questions on the euro? We should have banked a lot of profits. Um, I recommended being flat into the NFP. And we were long the dollar for that bounce up towards 100, didn't quite achieve it. Maybe it's going to give us another opportunity, but uh, right now I'd say the path of least resistance still is to the downside in the dollar. We're even getting some divergences uh, occurring in uh, the pound down here. I talked about us testing 145, 44 and a half level. A lot of people still negative, but we're right up against some pretty significant uh, resistance. I think there's a rally back towards 149, if I'm right about the dollar, that we get some type of fib retracement. Uh, this was one heck of a move. So let's look at some fibs here. And it's even possible that the pound may begin to outperform the euro. Get rid of these fibs. And re enter. From up here, which we were bearish up here, I know it seems like ancient history. But if we are setting lows down here on this divergence, this 149 level. And 200 day moves in at 9,955 for some confluence up around 61.8. The dollar's heading down to 96, 95 and a half. I think uh, initially the pound should uh, be able to rally to 47, and 47, 45 plus 47 gives you 49 ish, maybe 49 and a half. My view on the pound. We made new highs in Euro pound. Perhaps this is it. And if that's the case, the pound's going to be the preferred buy. Starting to look a little bit like some type of head and shoulders formation developing here. So my preferred long is going to be uh, the pound, but look at this neckline possibly developing right here. The euro pound, which would imply that the pound might be a better uh, long for the reaction, so rallies back towards this 75 and a quarter level uh, for a possible right shoulder, eventually a neckline at four and a quarter with a high. I did talk about 75.50 being possible. Could give us a break back down to 73. So looking to short rallies in Euro pound on some type of fib retracement up here. Starting to have some divergence here. So let's look at uh, fib retraces for shorts and euro pound from here to here. So really back at this weekly support. So I have some confluence around the 50% level up around 75. The 75.10 is a possible short with stops over the high. <clears throat> Eventually looking for a neckline break at four and a quarter, which could take us back down to 73, which could still even be considered uh, corrective. There's 72 and a half. So here's your 73 level that held last week after the third drive. So perhaps that's a projection for the next stop failing rally down towards 73, and then we'll take a look at from 73, you're looking at 71 again. Give me a Y if you're with me on the Euro pound. Moving over to US dollar again, I was right about forecasting and checking out this flash crash low. Here we are. Short term, we are beginning to diverge here. In the end, it's not great. Can't rule out another push down. It's very important that we hold the 116 level. If we don't, we're going to have some type of crash. But I believe that uh, we are going to dig in our heels. Last time we had a very big reaction from this level. Perhaps it's not as big, but 
maybe we get back to the breakdown. This rally from 116.15, 15 was a 520 pip rally. So if we make marginal new lows, it's, that would take us right back to the same level in the breakdown. That would apply a pretty good rally in the stock market now that the whole world's bearish. So I can't press the short side of the end right here. We're at major support, looking for major support to hold. And let's look at some type of retraces here as well. It was one heck of a break. We were talking about this being a head and shoulders on the weekly. So that's looking more and more likely. We're at the neckline here. So perhaps we get some kind of bounce before the breakdown. And let's look at some FIB levels to give us an idea. So this was a BOJ action here. And let's just assume this might have been the low here. So we could look for at least 38% back to 1930. Halfway back looks like around 120. And 61.8 back is 121. So looking for rallies to sell in the end, I, I'm really not ready to buy this, but I would not be short either at major support. So perhaps there's going to be some type of rally here. If you want to try it, you have to have your stops under 116, under 116.15, and at least under today's low, 16.55 that I think we could still retest, but you do have a one, a two, and a three, and a divergence on a four hour. So uh, favoring more of a recovery in the end than a crash right now, although closes back under this 116 level on the weekly is ominous. So a lot of confluence up here around the 20 and a half, 2070. That would be a great short should that manifest. Give me a Y if you're with me. On US dollar yen, do not chase anything. As I said, I don't have the same conviction level this week after the big moves that we had last week. You don't have to know all the time. In fact, it's wisdom to say I don't know when you don't instead of pretending you do and then acting upon it in the market. So here we are in Euro Yen. Uh, talked about that it was way overdue for a reaction. I think that we're looking at an A wave here and a B wave here. And I think we rallied back up towards 129.40 before considering shorts again. So 129.40 looks like what we could get here, 29 and a half. Don't believe there'll be enough juice, at least for now, to fill this big gap we left to the downside. But classic A, B, C, up towards 130 looks viable to me. The guppy trying to diverge well. We have one, we have two. Maybe they push it down one more time. But again, just like I'm looking for recovery in Euro Yen, I think a uh, recovery back to 175, which was a prior objective, and this one we were all over. We called this breakdown. I don't know if there's enough in it for this market to do much more than correct back towards 75, 76. I don't think that we're going to fill the gap. This looks like a breakaway gap, and we could have much lower levels coming, but I would not press it down here. I'd be looking for some type of retrace back towards 75. You know, there are big targets down here. Talked about this being a failing rally, a right shoulder, and a breakdown. Talked about 170 being achieved and even 164. Eventually, there are some people that have targets just based upon this formation that could take us back down towards 155. Aussie yen should be due for a bounce as well. We're beginning to diverge. Maybe there's one more push here. Um, I'd be looking at short recoveries back up towards 85. Give me a Y if you're with me. Do not chase this. We were negative up here, did not ride it all the way down, but uh, even here it looked like a big trade down at this 85, 84 level from 88. 
So if you wrote it all the way down, congratulations. I think it's a little late to be pressing the short side of Aussie, at least now, and the Aussie N. Maybe we get one, two, three, but starting to get some non-confirmations here in the Aussie N as well. Any questions on the N or cross? Feels late to short it and possibly a little premature to buy it, but perhaps there's uh, an entry setting up on one more low in all of these. So if the euro yen looks more constructive and 129, 130 looks like it's in the cards. So this was the call in Aussie. I said be a buyer at 69.50. It was 27. I said we take out the big round number. This uh, divergence wasn't that impressive. In fact, uh, wasn't impressive at all, but on the four hour it was. Again, this looks like we could have one one more low or a right shoulder developing here in Aussie. I think if we got a new low that we would diverge for the second time, but it's still possible that we just get some type of pullback here in the Aussie without making a new low. And we have some type of A, B, maybe around 69.60 and then another rally up. So with my bias being to the downside in the dollar and initial targets being achieved in the Aussie, we could have some type of decent retrace. We fell a long way. And uh, if you recall, it was bearish the Aussie here saying that we would see at least 70. And then I said under 70 to flush out the big round number, which we're doing. So I'd be alert for reversals in uh, Aussie USD, even if we got one more push down for a potential third drive like this, which would be kind of deep. It could take the Aussie all the way down to confluence around 6840 down the road. My bias is. Uh, to be looking for a recovery back to these lows or this 7140 level. So in the days ahead, if Aussie continues to be weaker, I'm looking for another buying opportunity. This was pretty good from nine and a half. At one point, you had 80 pips. So if you took that, you could always get a stand aside and look for one more drive down here in case the dollar does have that pop. Back up towards that par area. Give me a why if you're with me. And here's the relentless US dollar CAD. I was talking about do not short it till you see 4180, 42. Uh, we did have some divergences up here. Uh, we're still not over 70. Crude must still be under pressure. But I'm thinking that we're very close. Four hour is definitely diverging. And I'd be looking for some type of reversal here in USD CAD between here and 42.55 to 43. We are diverging on the four hour time frame. The daily's trying to confirm. In fact, I think it is. So we're having a blow off in uh, Canada, risk off and crude under pressure. Don't have to top pick it until we get a reversal, but at least we are getting some uh, RSI divergences on the four hour and so far even on the one. So thinking there's a turn on Tuesday from here, maybe up towards 42.50. You may want to try it with a 100 pip stop because this low right here at 40.45, that was a decent short from this divergence, but if we take out 40.45 now, this is 4063. We go 4263. Then we could trade 3860. So high risk, short potential in USD CAD. Give me a why if you're with me. So I'm not being real aggressive in anything right here. I had a great week calling that dollar rally from before the new year. 
and I was flat last Wednesday and now looking to get back in the zone. Taking a look at Euro Aussie, starting to run out of a little juice here. Still looks like we could have some more upside. This is drive one, this is drive two, looking for drive three. Eurocat is looking a little heavier. The Eurocad finally took out this high. We are diverging here. This one was a big home run from here. I called this pullback. I wasn't there for this push because I was flat in front of the uh, NFP. I'd stand aside. If you stayed long, I'd be booking profits here. Maybe we have one, two, three on Eurocad. A lot of this being uh, due to the uh, Euro recovery. And that's really a wrap up for me. So again, looking at the Dixie and the S&Ps, thinking that the S even the S&Ps are pretty overdone here. Unless we're just going to have an outright crash from this 1900 level, 1880 level. I wouldn't think that would be very positive for the dollar. And here's your line in the sand in the dollar. We start taking out today's lows, there's problems in the dollar. Yes, trying to hold on to this 98 level. And again, if we go the euro and the pound, I favor buying them both on weakness. Here's the euro, so it's advancing as we talk. Here we are going up towards this uh, redrive level I was talking about here. Here's the euro. I think we're headed up towards 110. Again, in the pound, decent divergence here. I'm still looking, uh, I'd be buying breaks in the pound now, looking for recover up towards, uh, recovery up towards a 49, first 47 and then 49 and a half level. And thinking that the end may still try and hold this uh, 116 level, perhaps 116.98 holds tomorrow. Otherwise, we have a third drive at major support. So a lot of market turmoil going on here. Still think that we have to hold this 116.37, and there'll be better shorting opportunities in U.S. dollar yen. Any questions on anything I've covered here today? Euro pound, we're going to be looking to sell rallies in the euro pound up here around 75.20. Eventually looking for uh, this uh, 74 and a quarter neckline to be taken out, which makes the euro your preferred short and the pound your preferred long. Any questions after the historic week we had in equities last week? How about on anything I haven't covered yet? Okay. Anything I haven't covered, you want me to take a look at something else I talked about? The Kiwi still holding these lows. So Kiwi still acting better than Aussie USD. And looking for a potential uh, three drive to a bottom now at 68.94. And Aussie USD coming up this week. And with that, perhaps the picture clears up again. Been pretty much on a roll for several weeks, several months, calling every turn in the dollar. This is the first time it's been a lot more neutral to me. But under 98, you have direction. If not, there could be one more push up towards 100. So thank you, everyone, for your attention. Good luck in the next couple of days, and I'll be back with you Wednesday.
Thank you, RoboForex.com, for letting me share my views and analysis with your clients. Good hunting, everybody, and see you on Wednesday.